sweet. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we just wait for people to appear. I'm going to be me. <laughs> Let me turn this down. Right. Yeah, I don't want to hear myself echo. I know, right? <laughs> we have three people now. Why do I only see one? You get to see the master screen. Oh, you know. Now we got four. We're up to five now, Summer. <laughs> so, all right. Um, well, we got nine people. Hi. Hey there, welcome. There we hey, go. Yukon and Sarah. I just talked to Sarah earlier today. So, welcome. Let's see. We got eleven people. We're moving. Let's go. <laughs> Jiggy does that better than me. I just do this. You like bobblehead. And I like, hey, brains. Thanks for coming. I know you're with your fam. Eating. <laughs> What's up, mystician? I guess Jiggy, too. <laughs> All right. Well, we're we're rolling in the folks now. So uh, welcome, everybody. <laughs> Glad to have you joining Summer and I tonight. And um, so if if you don't know us already, I'm Tisha Clinkenbeard, president of the Craft Whisker Club. And Sama is vice president of the Craft Whisker <laughs> Club and secretary for Beer Bond North Texas. Sponsored yeah. by Leo Warrior. Yep. So Summer, her nickname's Jiggy, <laughs> as you can see on the screen. So, um, but we're really glad to have you guys here. You can see in the ticker below our little image that we, um, we're having the Craft Whisper Club show tonight. It's the first Monday of the month. And um, the, the whole purpose of the show was to, um, give some spacing for the battles because we were having issues with logistics on that. But we also wanted to bring to the bearding community and the public, the craft whisker. Um, oh, see, I'm losing words tonight. The craft whisker part of the bearding community. How about that? <laughs> Yeah, we had so much fun on Saturday. So we just, it was a blast. But anyway, we'll get to that later. <laughs> All right. So um, you can see the Craft Whisker Battle is every third Monday of the month. So you get to see our faces um, again every third Monday. Um, and let's see, that next battle is May 2nd. Oh, excuse me. I'm really messing up. Can we start over? <laughs> All right. So the Craft Whisker Club, again, is um, we're dedicated to craft bearding in the bearding community. Um, as some say, in competitive bearding. Um, but our whole goal with the Craft Whisker Club and bringing it to life was that to bring craft bearding out to more of the public and to have a community that was really about this so we can share tips, tricks, um, just the whole sisterhood, if you will, but we brotherhood as well. So we've had a lot of men that have made craft beards within the last year, and it's super exciting. They were outnumbering the women on the craft whisker battles, um, and the women are starting to catch up. So you guys, um, hint, hint. We need some more male competitors out there willing to um, go for it in the craft whisker battle. Um, we also want to be a, a big contributor to the charities that all of the bearding community supports. So um, 
every time that you enter we have a lot of women that enter realistic and creative categories even in the same comp so it's really exciting to see the enthusiasm and support that we're bringing um what else do we do jig well i think a lot of it was just so that we could show the camaraderie that we actually have you know and then want to support just be part of it and kind of bring us together as basically the crafty part of it. We don't, we don't get to grow it. So we just have to make it, you know, and we can share and grow with that. It gives us um, all one common bond, you know, to bring our community together. So, And I think really the support um, has been a huge, huge motivator and a, a big target for us because um, <laughs> I think maybe historically the support and the the as you talked about the camaraderie really wasn't there to get together and to share tips and tricks and kind of be the, the sounding board on things to do. So good example, Summer and I um, tend to share tips and tricks. And so I've learned a lot from her um, too. And that's the big thing that we want to do. And as we talked about um, the number of competitors um like I said four of the competitors of the 11 that's almost half i can't do math maybe a third of that are first time competitors that's pretty awesome and mob fest i think we had three that were first time competitors um so that's and that's really really a, an awesome thing to see and we're seeing the craft category coming for the guys to be able to join in so that they can craft the beards and that's where they're included in this club as well <laughs> yeah and it's really it's a lot of fun to see what the guys come up with too yeah. like you know, about he wants to sign up again um to do it i think it's opening a lot of the guys eyes to what the girls go through kind of the thought process but they're doing it up really quick but then guys are crafty too you know and i don't let anybody help me so it gives <laughs> <laughs> so you don't let shannon help you so he got to build one do it yourself so I like and that. he's kind of my you know hey does this look silly or <clears throat> and so he really he gives me a lot of critique and he does help me like saturday he was helping me trim my my easter basket bunny so, and let's see here. I'm trying to click and talk. <laughs> All righty. So the next part we do is um, what our upcoming comps are. So um, I'm going to try to make it through our comps. You want to do one and I'll do the other? Or can you read oh, my mind? Yeah. <laughs> uh, All righty. So <laughs> that's me. I'm going first. I'll go first. <laughs> uh, nasal uh, Kingdom Cuts is putting on one. Uh, it's an autism charity. Hope for Autism. Hope Center for Autism. Uh, I almost had it. And Miss um, Summer will be judging. I'll be judging. Paul Kennedy will be judging from North Texas Spirit Alliance and Neil Despain from Cowtown. So okay. come out. Let us judge you. Cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm reading my husband's comment. <laughs> All right, so the next one we have is July 31st. It's Beards on the Rocks. Um, Beard Mob West Coast is hosting that in Spokane, Washington at the Rock Bar and Lounge, hence Beards on the Rocks. So um, their charity is People Over Profit. And if all these events you can check out because we share them on the Facebook page. Um, and you can see those and, and let's see here you go there's the facebook page let's see are you going to tell the big one summer no okay so september 11th is the 2021 national championships it's a national beard and mustache championship and beer team usa are hosting that it's going to be at Montage Mountain in Scranton, Pennsylvania. 
there are some events out there for the pre-party stuff and for the actual competition. So again, we'll sh share those with you on the Facebook page and you can click and tell us that you're going for all of these. That's what we like to see. And October 9th is Big Whisker Revival 7. It's uh, hosted by Cincinnati Beard Barons, and it's at the Southgate House Revival in Newport, Kentucky. And it's for the Barracks Project. And our guest tonight gave us some interesting info about the actual um, location of that. So I'm going to ask her about that later. She's waiting in the background for us. All right. Because she's waiting... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce to you Miss Kristen Wagner, aka Wags. Hello, everybody. Hi. Good. <laughs> Let's see here. All right. So, it's cool. Hello. And then Joey Rumpel says hi. Joey was uh, one of our last competitors on the battle. Yay. And so, um, She's got a couple of her beards behind her, but oh, do you yeah. want to introduce yourself, Wags? Yes, I am Kristen Wagner, um, more commonly known as Wags in the bearding community. I am a part of the Still City Beard and Mustache Club, uh, Beards of the Old Northwest, and I'm currently serving as Vice President for Bearded Hero. <laughs> I can't get this to work. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and the Bearded old. Hero Club was just... Um, what two weeks ago? About yeah, and they were we raised almost uh six thousand dollars in the course that I think. Oh, that's awesome! It's really awesome. It was a fun comp, too. It was it was interesting. I wish we could have got like your stuff to work. <laughs> yeah, I was having some technical difficulties with it, so um, I just popped in and said hi and, and did a profiling. <laughs> But they got to see you and talk to you. So that's what's important. Yeah. That. So that was pretty cool. So we normally ask you a few questions to, and have the audience a, if you guys have any questions for WAGS, we'll, we'll bring them in and get her to talk about it. So what you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing we, we've typically ask is what is the favorite beard that you have done? Your favorite. Are we talking realistic or are we talking creative? Both. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably my personal favorite has to be, I've done two pirate beards, one of which is behind me. It's like a pirate Kraken beard. My other one was my first mechanical beard. It had all these coins coming down it and I had two pistols, flag pistols that said SCBMC <laughs> when you hit the triggers. That started my slippery slope down the, all my beards need to move. <laughs> they have to do something. They have to move. They have to have some sort of special effects, something. My favorite um, realistic one I've done, Jim Jones is up there. Jim Jones is close to my heart. The, that beard came out fantastic when I did it. But my favorite is when I did Jessica Rabbit. Only because I set out one goal, and that was to ruin some guy's fantasy from childhood. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure I succeeded at that point. Because even the MC at one point, a I lot, though, I'll tell you, right? Well, I heard the MC go, I really like this, but I am really confused right now. <laughs> 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 so that, that realistic Jessica Rabbit is probably my favorite. And then my first pirate beard I've done is probably my favorite create a favorite a lot of people like this one my voodoo one because they just thought it was really cool looking and i think i am still i mean i'm the first and probably still only whiskerina to have fire on her face oh my because, gosh because that has candles that i light yeah so you <laughs> blown me out by mechanical deal i'm doing lucky to get movement sometimes it's always important to me, but actually my last two beers haven't moved. So, um, but yeah, we might have to have a mechanical discussion. I love um, logistics. I'll definitely, I'll, I'll have it with you. <laughs> like I've done a whole solar system that's fun. 
Oh, wow. But my beard was, it looked like a galaxy, and then I had a solar system in the middle of it, and the whole, the whole planet spun. Can you post pictures of these? On I think I have most of them on Facebook. I have to find the video of the of the solar system, but worst case scenario, when I go back to visit my parents again, I'll just take a video of it because that thing's still in existence. And I actually built a stand into it mm -hmm. because I couldn't lay it down. So oh, yeah. I have a flower stand behind it so I could prop it up. Wow. I definitely want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So how long I'm just like blown away because, yeah. What did you say, Summer? I'm sorry. How long have you been in the bearding community? Like, when did you first start? Uh, it's been a minute. I want to say either 2014 or 15. Wow. Um, I, I was at Still City's first competition ever, and after that competition is when I joined, and then I've just been in it since. So it's probably been a good maybe seven, eight years. So how did you get to the competition? How did you hear about it? Uh, my friend who does Renaissance festivals was back in town um, visiting and said, hey, there's a beard and mustache competition. I thought he said beards for breasts. And my mom actually had breast cancer. So I was like, yeah, beard competition for breast cancer. I'm totally into I'm totally going. Well, it was beards for beasts, which is fine. <laughs> I love animals too. I'm totally down for it. We went, um, <laughs> my old embalming partner, Ed, was actually the sergeant in arms in Still City and told me about the meeting. So then the next month I went to the meeting, just honestly to kind of catch up with him and see what it was all about. And I have not pretty much missed one since. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And so um, have you done any in-person comps since COVID? I don't think you have. Not that there's been a, there's been a lot of activity in the Southern part of the U.S. with yeah. them, but um, I think more the Northern part of the U.S. there's not quite as much. We haven't gone anywhere this year uh, well, with COVID going on. The last competition we actually went to in person would have been the Whisker Mania in kentucky where i was judging that's literally the last one we've been to so we haven't made it far enough south we're just we're not going right now we're gonna wait till it gets a little bit better i mean i know some people with their feelings and vaccinations but we're getting our vaccinations so maybe after that we will start to travel a little bit more yeah because my parents are older and i want to go see them and not I think I can spread the COVID to them, you know? Yeah, that's uh, definitely a concern for a lot of people. Always. <laughs> <coughs> so um, now we have to ask you kind of what are, what are the tips and tricks you have? And I know you'll probably, probably both for realistic and for your creative, some of the things you you learned from others or that you have told others that kind of deal? Well, I, I learned everything a lot on the fly, to be honest. My first beard, I ended up buying a, um, a fake beard from the store thinking it had some, like, some backing to it. Wasn't even thinking, chopped all the hair off of it. There's no backing. So I had to use what was left and get, um, some kind of felt and put it behind it to make it. That's actually that one right there, the Day of the Dead one. So I kind of learned by the fly. My suggestion for realistic would definitely be get yourself a mannequin head. It doesn't have to be a good one. I wouldn't. I would stay away from styrofoam. Um, I use a plastic one, and I literally build the realistic beard right on that. Because then when I pull it off, it already has that shape and form. And it makes it way easier if you're styling for um, like a mustache or you're doing a styled beard. I use I tend to use a little bit too much hair 
in my realistic, so I can't really sell it as well. But we can, I, you can usually get it done. For creative, um, I would do yourself a favor and get an emergency beard bag and take anything that you might need. Definitely take the glue gun. Definitely take extra uh, glue sticks, which you can't have the glue gun without sticks. <laughs> they do make glue guns that have an on and off switch. So you don't have to let it be plugged in the entire time. You can actually turn on when you need it, turn off when you need it. about that recently. I didn't know about that on off. That was like the best thing. Someone gifted me this glue gun that had an on and off switch. I'm like, this is just going in my beard bag and is now my favorite glue gun ever. <laughs> um, like glue gun, like any like bobby pins, any little thing that you think you might need that's on your beard at that point. Like I've taken extra beads because my beard had beads in it. Yeah. I always take extra stuff. Like scissors. Because then you can trim up if you need. I've had a whole workstation at a hotel set up before just to do little final touches and hope to God I didn't have to pay extra because I was putting hot glue on a desk. <laughs> yeah, I tend to take some leftover of everything that's on my beard and everything I use to put it together. Mm -hmm. um, like this Saturday the whisk, one side of the whiskers came off of my mustache. Just one yeah. side. Bye. Yeah, it was <laughs> summer's fall. <laughs> and um, so I ended up having to try to hot glue that. And of course, it wasn't as neat and pretty. And so I was upset because it wasn't as clean as the other side. So, but they got on there. So okay. that's, I've sat. Like, I've been in the bathroom trying to get mustache on, and it's just falling off because I'm just sweating because it's so humid. Oh, good tip for um, whiskerinas for realistic. Deodorant. If you're sweating, put deodorant on your face. It'll stop you from sweating. Antiperspirant. <laughs> I had never thought about that. Okay, but will, like, a prosade stick... It face. would still stick. If you don't like, don't glob it on. You want to do like right. a squid. Like Man. just enough. And then prosade everything. It should stick right on that bad boy. Just give it a little second. Right on. Good tip. Yeah. And Joey. <laughs> <laughs> I have everything. Sounds like it. Yeah, I'm. If, if you run into me in the bathroom and you're having issues, I'll throw my shit down and help you. I don't care about my my stuff. I'm like, I got you. What, what do you need? I got you in my bag. What, what do you need? And I will help you fix your beard. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's, that's one of the parts. I've yet to go to a competition where if somebody said, hey, do you have a glue gun? You're going to get three of them. You're... <laughs> It's not just going to be one person or, you know, I'm having trouble getting this to say or this to work. It just it's, it blows me away in, in that. And see, I I've had my first experience competing. It was very much that way. We were standing in line and, and people the ladies were talking about things they use to make a beard, what bases they use. And, and you know, this is just standing in line behind stage and um I guess that I was nervous and that really kind of encouraged me. Yeah. Um, you know, not every comp is that way. I'm going to have to say that that's not been 100% true, but I, I think especially now the majority of them, it's definitely everybody's got backup, you know? I mean, there was, there's a lot of competitions I've been to where it is silent in that back room with all the girls standing there. Like no one's talking. That was, years ago but it's way different now but I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> now if you can talk we just all talk to each other i am cutting up quickly <laughs> i did, yeah, this, I did this one beard where it was saw blades i had twisted because i did what? like a lump it they were saw blades oh, like okay. the thin ones uh -huh. and i twisted them slowly but i twisted them into like a mustache and everything with 
all these evergreen, like it was real evergreen for the beard part. And I was walking through line. And I'm like, don't get close to me. These aren't dull. These will cut you. These will cut you. Yeah, I think that um, Megan Gooch, when she did the got to be beard for Cassie, mm -hmm. it was the same deal because she had had gloves on to cut it and to mess with it. But you definitely did not want to go up and say, hey, you got a cool beard. Yeah. <laughs> so. And you have people touch it and you're like, I just told you not to. Yeah. It's sharp. You'll bleed. It will hurt you. <laughs> You need a caution sign. Like, I'm going to have to throw this in my car because someone drunk's going to touch it. It's terrible. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, I think. I tried Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Crystal's comment. It's sometimes silent because we can't move our mouse. Yeah. Someone, it was a photographer actually um, this weekend. He, he said, can you smile? And I'm like, I am smiling. It, you can't. <laughs> You can't see it. <laughs> right. And um, do you usually, how do you um, like hold your creative beards on? Have you used different methods or do you have a oh, go-to? Yeah. Um, my go-to is usually if it's light enough, the, you can get it at, um, Joanne Fabrics or Michael sells it too. It's just like a strap of just stretchy band. And you can cut it to what size you need. I usually do like a two rounder for it. Like one here and one here. Like on the top of my head. But I had some pretty heavy beards in the past. Up to like 20 pounds. That were just on my head. And with that I had to go to Home Depot. And get this like corner bracket. Um, and a leather tool belt that had like the two notches in it and screw the strap onto the bracket to put on my head so it was comfortable enough for me to wear it dang oh man that was <laughs> i don't know if i could do a 20 pound beard it just it it boggles my mind about how i could actually my neck like hurt. give me a headache so <laughs> my, my neck hurt definitely the next day but like that was the most comfortable beard i had though i'm like oh this is i done them completely wrong and have had like wire at the top of that for a heavy beard and I'm like I am cutting through my skull through my brain right now and I can feel every motion of it and then I did this strap I'm like this is so is comfortable I can wear this all day Excellent. and that was my Beauty and the Beast beard when you're at a competition how long do you wear your beard like the um, I will wear it if it's the realistic I might keep it on a little bit longer but depending on the weight, I might put it on like two categories before and then take it off afterwards. And then I usually try to find out if competitions want you to wear your beard on stage if you get called off. Right. So that's always an interesting factor. It used to be a lot more common a few years ago. I don't, don't think now people really mind if you don't wear it up. I think most people probably do. Most girls would wear it up at this point. But it usually comes off right afterwards, depending on how heavy it is, because I'm probably going to have neck problems, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, my beards generally aren't uncomfortable, but I found, and maybe I should stop wearing them, but the wig caps always give me a headache, even though I stretch the heck out of them. But... Um, I don't know. Maybe I should stop wearing them. <laughs> I don't want a wig hat. Yeah, wig caps can be wig caps can be brutal. See, my hair was a lot longer, so I would just hide it in my hair and wear a hat, and that was the easiest way to do it. Because I have, I have some gnarly hats that I have either made or acquired. <laughs> do you yeah, I've used hats to match. Summer. I'm sorry. What's up? headpieces to match your beard or do you just like go with the outfit with it how do you do like the complete look the costuming yeah you do a costume with yours oh yeah mostly everything has a costume with it it just it puts it all together 
and it's so much fun and it's like for a second you get to be that different person with this crazy thing on your face and it doesn't make sense to anyone else in the world except for the people in that room right (laughs) because when you say i compete in beard competitions it's usually me like explaining to people like while scrolling through my instagram to find a photo (laughs) right yeah you can't just tell them they don't get it yeah no and then they go wow I didn't know this existed. I'm like, well, there's a lot of things people don't know exist, but yes, this is one of them. <laughs> well, that happened to me at Mobfest. Um, we stayed at bed and breakfast, and there was another couple there that um, were there for Mobfest as well. And so the second morning, um, this third couple was in there having breakfast with us, and um, somehow we came to the topic of beard competitions. Um, I guess because obviously the guys have beards and um, they were talking about how we did at worlds competition in 2019. And, you know, my husband got fourth and, um, and I told, I answered the question. Yeah, I got third. And and the lady next to her that had no idea about the bearding world, she started kind of giggling and my (laughs) Shannon goes, she's serious. (laughs) And the other lady that was sitting next to her in the bearding community, she actually had already pulled up a picture to show her. But um, so it's it was kind of crazy. But um, so Sarah Sherman, she said that they all know how much work it is getting them back on. So it's cool to leave it off now. <laughs> I uh, I I have to agree with that. Because for me to go put a beard back on after I've taken it off would be, I mean, I'd have to wear it all the time if I had to wait for it to see, okay, did I, am I going back up on stage? So. Well, that's what happened at Moffitt's. Like, Amarta made a comment. Every time she takes hers off, you get called back up for that tiebreaker. That's her and Crystal. I mean, it just, that's what happened. That's what happened at Moffitt's. So. so Throw it back on. I'd already packed it away. I'm done. I'm done. So, so and it wasn't easy. I mean, I was wig was off everything. So, so I don't think this competition exists anymore. But there was a competition where you had to wear your beard the entire time if you were whiskering up. Wow. They're like yeah. the guys have to wear theirs all the time, so you have to wear yours. I'm like. <laughs> Sit and spin. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you know what this costs? <laughs> what, did you pay for it? Like, yeah. yeah. Are you, it's like this is different than what you're growing. Trust me. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I'm not walking around with uh possibly. I think it was in Kentucky, but it wasn't the rich. It's not the Richmond one. It wasn't the Richmond one. <laughs> I would have to know ahead of time, you know, but I don't yeah. think one that I've wanted to wear. Like, I want to go and have fun, you know. I'm not used to having to lift my mustache to eat, and drink, and swallowing hair. I'm not, you know, so I just, I figure once you're judged, you're judged, and you can just move along, so. <laughs> that's that's kind of how I feel. It's like I would I would track people down who are putting on the competition and go, do I need to keep this on any longer than I need to? Or can I take it off when I get off stage? Yeah, for sure. But now it's a common place to take them back off and leave them off. Yeah. So I much nicer. Cool. <laughs> I mean, I if they want to wear it the entire time, I'm, I will support them 110%. I just don't want to do it myself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think it's cool if they do something. Um, I know Sarah Sherman used to wear hers all the time. She show, She left her house drove got there arrived ready to go and i mean i thought that was great that's just not me you know what i mean yeah i thought it was go for it but should have my beards i'm just happy they fit in my car to get to the competition (laughs) i was like calling people like hey can i get a ride with you oh by the way do you have enough room for this Because they were just getting, I was just getting bigger and bigger with what I was doing. And at one point I was looking at them going, this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> do you pack yours up or do you just take it like exposed? 
you know, like you try to put it in a box or carrying case of some sort. Especially so when you travel. I yeah. mean, like flying. Do you fly or travel with your beer? So when I went to uh, Worlds, I actually shipped, I did a dangerous, played a dangerous game. I shipped my beer to Austin, Texas. Um, but I put enough stuff in the box to ship it that if it got messed up on the transit, I could fix it. So that was fine. And then like the next day, as soon as it was over and done with, I packed it back up, went to UPS, shipped it back home. They go, when do you need it there? I'm like, I don't care if it even shows up right now. Just send it back. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't matter to me when it gets there. I can get it a month from now. It's fine. It's fine. We're good. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think Crystal's um, comment is pretty, pretty accurate because um like when I went to um, nationals last year or year before in 2019, um, I carried mine in my carry on in my actual comp bag because I was terrified it would get messed up, which it was pretty sturdy. So it probably shouldn't have really been a concern. I was like, I'll give up all my clothes, but I'll have my beard, you know, worst case scenario. Um, and same thing, you know, I'm just wondering, is TSA going to have me actually pull the beard out because it was all metal structure and, and um, then they'll pull it out and they'll think what and, you know, why do you have boots on a, um, a metal structure? But that is still one of my most comfortable beards. I probably wouldn't have taken it off at nationals after, except like I said, the, the wig cap was, painful at that point but the beard itself was really comfortable wig caps can be killer they they really can be by the time we got to go on stage i was ready to cry because my head was just killing me so in summer we were in opposite summer barely made it to get in line and we wanted our picture made together but um she just got there with her beard on it and i'd been in mine so far and it was they were it was going on schedule for the record oh, <laughs> they were running ahead like an hour ahead and they called oh, wow. it's me and my daughter was competing in the uh creative mustache one division <laughs> and they were like they're running ahead where are y'all walking out of the hotel in street clothes so we had to get there um my daughter helped me, Melissa Crafton helped us. Um, yeah, walked right out. They're like, they're calling your category. So it was, it was awful <laughs> to say that's, the least. I mean, I was panicking, you know, I mean, the pros aid wasn't dry. I'm sitting there holding it uh, because my daughter was helping me. Hers didn't hold as well. And so, I mean, hers was held by the uh, clear plastic uh, stretchy band for like bracelets and stuff. Yeah. I mean, she's got these big cheeks and stuff, but it was still, it was, um, it was the mimosa branches because she was a giraffe. And so they eat mimosa branches. And so it, it was pretty heavy and it was swinging. And so she kept, you know, I mean, it just didn't feel sturdy. Same with mine. Mine was, uh, had motion in it and you had to pull it. Uh, it wasn't mechanical. It was old school. <laughs> <laughs> And so I pulled it, but you know, when you pull it, you can't pull that off of your face. And it was only attached just on the goatee area. So yeah. Oh, well, live and learn, right? Okay. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what are you going to do? I am that person who's like at the beard. Like when did the doors open? Sweet. That's what I'm getting there. Cause I need to find my spot to put my beard. I need to talk to some people, see what's going on. I got to get like a, my game plan going. Hey, what category am I? What number am I? What are we doing this? Are we running on schedule? Is everyone here? All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so there was this pre-party. <laughs> a, a lot of regrets that night. So, yeah, was, we were lucky to be up at that time. <laughs> seems like all the pre-parties. <laughs> 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 I mean, there's a couple more after that, but I'm I'm trying now. <laughs> hey, we were in Chicago. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I never thought I'd ever in my life be in Chicago for any reason. I'm from Texas. That's good, you know. 
Like that's, I've traveled more in two and a half years than I've traveled in my entire life. So, oh yeah. It's amazing. But it's, um, it's just so much fun and, and we've really experienced it and Shannon and I, and I think other people have really experienced it in the last gosh year, maybe, um, that everyone is, did, is super, super a family, you know, nowadays. Um, and it's there to support and anybody who needs it. So, um, that's the biggest thing in, in mob fest four was especially that way. Cause you felt like it was almost like a family reunion. Um, family just, reunion. Getting, <laughs> just getting to see everybody and, and uh, be active. And that's one of the things that I've come to love about it. But. That's probably like the whisker revival that Wags was talking about. It's year seven where it's going. I mean, is it like a family reunion when y'all go back? Is it the same people? Oh. And here it gets a little bit more. I mean, you lose a couple, but you, you always lose a couple throughout the yeah. years. Like there's people that I have on my Facebook that I met in Richmond the second time I ever competed and I have never seen them again in my life. Right. Like they've just fallen off the bearding world they on the East coast. The whisper revival is nice because we, they get people from, like Missouri that come in, like some of my favorite people are from Missouri and I love seeing them. I love going down there to see them. Jim Jones is now in Ohio, but he always went to Whisper Revival and I will see him there all the time. I, I love it. You have their people that you might just see at that competition every year. And that's it. Depending on what competition you go to. It's like family reunion. <laughs> yeah. Rochester, New York. I I'll see those guys when I go to Rochester, if they have a competition, you know, the rich RVA guys, most of them I only see if I go to RVA. And you gave us, um, uh, I, I said I was going to ask you about this because the Southgate House revival. Yeah, yeah. it was it's a, it was an old church they uh, made into a music venue. There's two stages. The big stage that you come out of the doors in the middle and then the little small stage where they have music. It's really cool. Really pretty too. All the stained glass is still there. <laughs> And it's nice because they usually do tables and chairs, which not a lot of comps do. So you can actually sit down if you need to. That's important. Um, I people, you know, we can be there for you know eight hours plus sometimes, and not having somewhere to sit is very difficult at times. Nationals was like that. There was. I think what three tables in the the whole place um and that was you know thank goodness we had snagged a chair <laughs> <laughs> because it to stand up like that you know um is difficult and there's a lot of people too in the bearding community that that have i don't know not disabilities per se but you know um bad backs bad knees feet oh, yeah. you know um I think that's really important to consider, especially we talk about what we would do um, or consider when we put on a comp. Um, we talked to that, talked about that before um, in our used to be our chats on Monday night. And um, I know you've done some comps planning, right, Wise? Yeah, a lot of comp planning. <laughs> um, so what advice would you give like a club um because we ask this all the time uh, for a club as far as what things you consider when you start planning. And um, we talked about judge, judge selection and venues and that kind of deal. So a lot of times if you've been doing it for a little bit, you already have that set up. It's the judging sometimes is hard to pick who you want because you have to go through a list of names and you're like, did we already ask them before? I can't remember. Did they judge for us before? I don't know. Right. Um, like Soul City, before I moved to Cleveland, we were having it at the Rivers Casino every year. And then the Rivers Casino opened it up to weddings, and we lost our venue, essentially. So then we had it at a BFW. So then you have to consider, do we, they want, oh, we want old school with it, essentially. Like an old school comp, how they used to be in a fire hall with a couple bearded dudes just walking through there, you know? <laughs> Um, we were planning to have a competition at the Akron Zoo. 
we were going down to the Akron Zoo for fears of Old Northwest, we had to keep going down to the zoo and seeing where we could set up. We had to have a plan A, we had to have a plan B, because if you're going to have an outdoor event or plan on that, you need to have an indoor event plan too. Where are you going to be if it rains? If you don't have that plan B, you're kind of a freak. Um, getting your sponsorships, getting your letters together to send out to people for sponsorship. That's a big deal. You might want to have an email just associated for that. That's outside of the club. If you mm -hmm. think you're going to run with the same title for the next couple of years, you know, because Still City was Beards for Beasts. Take it. We, they didn't, we didn't do this. In retrospect, we probably should have. Have a separate email just for competition stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can always CC your club email on it. So you have that in the club email too. Make sure, like, what are you going to do for trophies? Trophies, if you're trying to plan something, is you think you're like, oh, we'll figure it out. Until you're like, crap, now we have to figure it out. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much the bane of our existence at one point, trying to plan the zoo one was, what What are we going to do for trophies? Because I was like, porcupine quails. Like the quails of the porcupine. They're like, uh, if people fly here, they can't fly home with that. I was like, oh yeah, it's sharp. Mm. That would be a hard process of elimination. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't think about it. That's a good idea. <laughs> like, like, are the trophies going to be, If are, is your event going to be big enough where people are going to be flying there? What hotel accommodations are around there that you can do? Maybe you can work with the hotel to either get a free night stay or get the block of rooms or discount rate. Right. Or get two hotels. I'm um, When we did, what's it called? Beards Behind Bars. It was, we had a shuttle bus for the pre-party to and from the hotel. So people didn't have to drive in nowhere, Mansfield, Ohio. We didn't have it for the competition to the prison, but we had it for the, <laughs> for, you know, the main night. <laughs> like, are you going to get food trucks? Does the venue have food? Do you need to pull food in? Yeah. There's like little, like you, you start planning it and then you realize, okay, well, maybe I need one more thing. All right. Now there's another thing. Now there's another thing. Right. And it's a beard competition. The day of the comp, something's going to go wrong. Absolutely. Without a deal, without a fail, something is going to go wrong. Yeah, definitely. It's just how you handle it when it goes wrong right. is the main point. You can have something go completely wrong where you're like, I don't know if I can pull myself out. And then you pull yourself out and no one ever knows something went wrong. Well, we're getting to the end of our hour and really appreciate Wags you coming on and sharing everything in your experiences. And um, I can only hope to be a oh, wonderful stop. beard builder. <laughs> we'll talk logistics and you'll, we'll get you there. Trust and me, I will help you with any logistics you want. Those emails. <laughs> this has been fun, ladies. Yes, thank you so much for joining us. It's our second show, so we're still working the kinks out of it. So, but very excited to have you. And um, just to wrap up, we've uh, we've got some of our previous comps out on the Facebook page, and we make uh, different albums for the different competitions. So you'll find some photos from this last weekend, Central Texas um, Bookstar Barber. It was car show and uh, beard competitions and beards on the bay and bearded hero. You'll find those out there on the page. If you have some that you would like us to add to those albums, please feel free to drop us um, a message on the craft whisker club page. And we'll definitely add it. It's usually just ones that we kind of glean from other posts or that we've taken ourselves, et cetera. So um, we're definitely glad to have other cameramen contribute. Um, let's see. Our next battle is on the 19th of this month of April. And our two competitors are Don Childress and Emily Puckett. And super excited to have those talented ladies join us on the battles. And then Dave Entz from... Um, Manbeard is going to be supplying our boxes and his fiance, I think her name is Lauren. 
I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and I shouldn't know that because I'm also supposed to throw in their man beard, Whaler Clink, for a discount. And so had to do that. Um, <laughs> and um, I think that's about it for tonight. Anything else you guys want to say to the audience? Good night or... Good night, everyone. It was good, to see you, <laughs> even though I can't see you. Thanks, Wes. <laughs> like sharing. I mean, oh, no problem. I'll see if I can find the old videos that I have of some of those beards that actually like spin and do stuff and see if I can get them posted for you. Yeah, yeah. that'd be awesome. You'd <laughs> probably like my Cheshire account one I did. Absolutely. Probably so. Yeah. Because I haven't looked at all your your photos yet and all your creations, so yeah, I have a tea party that the Cheshire Cat it um, comes up and then it disappears like the Cheshire Cat smile. Oh, dang! Yeah, we're gonna have to have like a slumber <laughs> party at your place where we all learn this this stuff. So I'll play mad scientist with you guys anytime. <laughs> Well, maybe we should talk about nationals this year. Hmm. Are you going to go? We're planning to. And you, Wags? I don't know. I mean, Scranton is only seven hours from us here. Because it's about five hours from where I used to live. So, who knows? Maybe. We'll see. So, the we'll answer see. is yes. We're answering for her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be all vaccinated. So, we'll see. <laughs> There you go. All right. Well, everybody, thank you guys for joining us. And I hope you have a great, great night. And we'll see you in two weeks for the Whisker Battle. Um, also, one last deal is if you want to become a Craft Whisker Club member, um, it's a $20 membership fee. And you'll find the information on the Facebook page. And until May 1, we're actually waiting the three meeting requirement because. Um, of the COVID pieces, um, all of our meetings have been virtual and probably will be the majority of those. Um, but we did not have one in, in March because of the MobFest 4. Lots of people are traveling for that. So um, May 1 uh, is, or not, I'm sorry, what did I say earlier? May 2nd at 3 p.m. is going to be our next meeting. Um, Drop us a line, see if you're interested in being a competitor on the battle or a person who builds a box. Right now, I think we have box builders through um, uh, June, uh, our box builders, we have those. So we definitely are looking for competitors. And um, we posted today, if you know someone who wants to compete that's under the age of 17, uh, we'd like to also get one out there with um, the younger generation um, of future beard builders. And, but that's about it. And like I said, you guys have a great night. We'll see you next time. Bye guys.